Hey, and welcome to Need to Make It, I'm Mike. So in a previous video, we saw that the bed of the K1 Max was warping quite a bit, and it was impacting that first layer of our prints. And to have the best success on our first layer, we needed to preheat the bed. Now we can do that manually, but we can also do it automatically. So in this video, I'd like to show you how easy it is so that you can do it yourself. So stick around. Here's that time lapse from the previous video, and when we heated from room temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius, the bed shape changes a lot. But what's most important is that after it reaches the set temperature, the bed continues to change and settles back down. And this goes on for more than 10 minutes. The 100 degrees Celsius is pretty much the worst case scenario, and with the bed being so big and only three millimeters thick, preheating before probing is necessary for good results. It's not a big problem to preheat manually, I know, but it's a little bit annoying if you ask me because we have a highly automated process here and I think it's just best to keep it that way. So here's what we need to do to get this to work automatically. Open up your slicer and find the area for start G-code. It's usually along with your printer properties. You can see a section called machine start G-code. It may also be called printer start G-code and then an area to make adjustments. I'd like things to work every time with 100% success and not 50% of the time it works 100% of the time. So I don't want to set the temperature to be static. I'd like it to be variable based on the material that we're printing with. So to do that, we're gonna find the area before the words start print, and then we'll say M190, which is set bed temperature. And then normally it would say S100 for 100 degrees, but instead we're gonna take the information from below for the bed temperature, and that will pick up the bed temp for the material that we've chosen to print with. And if you're using a different slicer, you can just copy the info right after bed temp equals and paste it after the S, and then you're gonna get what you need. And now we just need to soak it for however long we want. So that is G4, which means dwell. And then we have a P for the length of time in milliseconds. So if we want it to dwell for 10 minutes, which I would recommend for higher bed temps, we can use P600,000. These are one one thousandths of a second, so that means 600 seconds or 10 minutes. So maybe an easier way to say it is nine minutes is your ideal soaking time, then we can multiply it by 60 to get how many seconds, and then by a thousand so your printer can understand you. This is 540,000 milliseconds, or P540000. Just make sure you don't add an extra zero or you will be waiting for a very long time for your print to start. Now, while we're talking about milliseconds, liking this video and subscribing to my channel will only take you between 5,000 and 10,000 milliseconds, and it really helps to support this channel and keeping me making content like this. So then we need to save those changes, and then what we can expect to happen is that when we send to the printer, it's gonna raise the temperature of the bed to match the bed temp of the material that you're printing with, and then it's gonna wait, in my case, for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, it's gonna go through the regular start sequence, cleaning the nozzle and probing the bed. Yeah, that turned out well. I'm happy with the amount of wait time before the print began. I measured a little different from what it actually did because we had set nine minutes, but I only measured around six and a half or seven minutes before the print began. But I think what's happening there is that the bed temperature is within a certain range and it was throttling on and off to try and get right to that 105 mark. What it did was actually better than what I was expecting it to do. And we can always play around with the numbers to see what works best for the printer that we have, the bed warp that we're dealing with. And if you're more skilled than I am in this area and you know how to set the dwell time based off of the bed temperature, where 100 degrees requires 10 minutes of dwell and 60 degrees requires five minutes of dwell, please let us know in the comments. But for now, this is what we're gonna need and I will leave this info in the description for you to copy and paste. And this is what it should look like for each of the slicers that I mentioned. This one is for Orca Slicer. This one is for Creality Print. And this one is for Prusa. It's gonna be better if you can install CAMP for this printer, you're gonna get even better results for your first layer and the probing will be quicker as well. But for what we're doing here, you don't need to root and you can simply add these lines into Creality Print and you'll get even better results for that first layer right away. 
Now, if you haven't rooted your printer yet and you want to, I have a very quick video showing exactly how to do that so you can have more control of your printer and start to experiment a little bit more with it. And that link will be up there. I'm also working with a good company who will be producing thicker beds for anyone who wants to fix the problem at the source. And when that video releases, it's gonna be up there in the top corner as well. That said, I wanna thank each of my amazing patrons for helping to support this channel and making videos like this possible. And if you wanna help support this channel as well, I have left a link there in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Take care, everybody. We will see you on the next one.